This video is brought to you by Gaslight Recorder St. Patrick's Day Block Party. That is exactly where you want to be this St. Patty's Day. Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of the Daily Aztec Sports Talk with Matt and Pat. I'm Matt. And I'm Pat, patting Matt on the back. Hey, we're going to talk some San Diego State basketball to start things off. A lot of talk about the NCAA tournament and what seed the Aztecs are going to get in this uh, 2015 tournament. Let's just dive right in, Matt. Where do you think the Aztecs are going to end up? Seven seed in the Midwest. Huh. If San Diego State were to be in the West, they would get probably an 8, 9, or 10 seed, which is less favorable because you're going to play the big dogs earlier. So I like 7 seed in the Midwest. That's where most bracketology experts, yes, that's a word, bracketology. It's, I think, even in the dictionary now. A seven seed in the Midwest, probably playing a team like Indiana, maybe a Big Ten team, maybe a lower ranking Big 12 team, uh, perhaps Texas A&M out of the mm -hmm. SEC. But somebody like that poised for a second round matchup against either Gonzaga or Wisconsin. I think SDSU fans would much rather play Gonzaga, who just lost to BYU that San Diego State beat earlier in the year. But that's kind of where it's looking right now, a seven seed in the Midwest, which is pretty favorable considering how weak as, uh, the Mountain West Conference has been this year, 12th in RPI. What do you think? I like seven seed in the Midwest. Yeah. San Diego State hasn't been particularly great to, you know, deserve a six or a five or a four. You know, they've had some losses. They've had some really bad losses. And in the wins, they've had a lot of bad wins. So, I, you know, I like seven seed. It's, I guess, delightfully middle of the pack yeah. from their standards. Um, and like you said, possibility of playing maybe a team with an off year and then running into a big dog, literally Gonzaga Bulldogs in the second round. <laughs> um, you know, we'll see where that goes. Selection Sunday is still a couple weeks away. So, hey, we are both agreeing on something. How about that? That's a really, really seven rare. Seven seed in the Midwest. I don't know how to describe Midwest with my hands. But... And a quick note, a quick note on SDSU RPI. We were walking to the show today talking about this. In 2011-2012, the Mountain West was the number one RPI conference in all of the country. San Diego State was ranked third in the Mountain West. They got a seven seed. This year, San Diego State will be tied for first in the Mountain West, and it'll get a seven seed. That just kind of shows you how much farther down the Mountain West is in the last few years. But right now, let's do a quick little update on the quarterback race in spring football. That's right. We're already talking about the gridiron. Aztecs football coach Rocky Long has a happy problem on his hands. He has six guys who he and his coaching staff are going to try and filter out to be the starting quarterback for the Aztecs this fall. And Matt, you've got a couple updates on how they've progressed through the first couple weeks of practice. Well, I've got two big updates on two of our big transfers. Jake Rodriguez, the transfer from Oregon, is disappointing so far. He, his legs haven't been as, as quick and as strong as advertised early, um, but there's a lot of time left for him. But somebody who has impressed is Maxwell Smith, the transfer from Kentucky. And I know Kentucky is a pretty, pretty terrible football program. <laughs> But he played his best games against the big boys in the SEC, like Alabama and LSU. So he's got a lot of good experience, and so far it seems like he's bringing that to the table. So there's your update. Thought question: Which would you rather have, Rodriguez or Smith? I would personally have I would personally have Rodriguez, just because Rodriguez you add the mm. the uh, the threat of maybe a mobile quarterback, maybe opening up another wrinkle in the offense. And making more for the opposing defense to cover. See, I think the strength of this offense will be Donald Pumphrey in his junior year, and I think he gets more opportunity in a pro-style system. As much as I do not like the pro-style system, I will say that right here. Spread over pro nine times out of ten. But that one time out of ten when you have Donald Pumphrey, got to go for it. It is March, and we're talking about football. So anyway, it looks like it's time for me to destroy Matt Bain in another game of the Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Cheers, I so we're stuck. Now we It's Red Bomber. It's Red Bomber. Bye, guys. <laughs> I don't know. And once again, a thanks to our sponsor, Gas Lamp Quarter, St. Patrick's Day Block Party. That is exactly where you want to be this St. Patty's Day.